guys, uh, just want to get another quick tutorial on sessions of cookies and smash that like button. Notification squad, where are you at? Ring the bell. No, nonsense. Great. So we're going to talk about cookies and sessions today, or rather sessions and cookies, uh, as it pertains to Rails, kind of where it falls into the internet. Straight from the Rails docs, can you see this? Is that more better? Great. Straight from the Rails docs, right? HTTP, all right, I should have put this in quotes, is a stateless protocol. So what does that mean? What does stateless protocol mean? Yeah, it doesn't have um, any memory of sort of state, meaning, uh, as you've probably gone through, that render versus redirect, right, and how whether or not you redirect, or if you render, it has access to the instance variables that you've created within your actions and the controllers. Cool? It's a lot of terms. So a quick thumbs up if I've lost you already. Ironic, right? All right, cool. Quick thumbs up if that made sense to you. Oh, wow. Such a powerful class. Cool. So what this means is that without the idea of sessions, that we would have to identify or authenticate our user every single time. Right? Anytime you make a new request on your page, because it's stateless, it would be like, great, I don't know who you are anymore. You've gotten to, from the index, getting the show page, it's like, great, I've lost who you are. I have no idea who you are. I'm just trying to show you the show page. Right? And that's kind of like the idea. And so with the flash hash, you can persist data from one request to another for only one extra request. And so that doesn't lend itself good to a good user experience in terms of logging in. But there are so many different things you can do besides just log in. And so we will build something completely different. And that is going to be uh, a shopping cart. Cool. That's sort of a pretty common usage of like session. So what you have here is you have like a menu, right, which is like your index. And then you have a cart. And cool, you have this little cool, cool guy smooth over here, right? No idea how this cart works right now. And you have all of these things. This is extremely painfully seeded data. So if you get a chance, please look through them, right? If I go to the show page of these trash can nachos, it'll tell me that they are nachos literally made in the garbage in the alleyway behind the restaurant. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. So what we want to happen, what this functionality we want for this website, is that if I click this button, and it says add to cart, the idea is that it will go to this cart. And then if I refresh or add another item to the cart, it should have both of those items. The state should persist. Is anyone like lost so far? Are we good on like what feature we're trying to build? Cool. So the idea here is that I want to be able to click this button and then something were to happen. Where's the first place I should look to try to implement this feature? When I first click this button, Right? Where should I look? Where should I look? Hmm? I clicked it, by the way. It just says post to nachos. Right? What should this button do? Well, I mean, that's what it's doing right now, right? But the idea is like, what should this button do? When I click it, it should do what? It should add something to my cart, right? Like, that's. Sorry, the question seemed confusing, but when I click it, it should add to my cart. So what we could do is we could take a look at this button right here. And this button is, what page is this? It's the index page, right? So I can take a look at my nachos, specifically at my index. And I see here, there's my cart with this powerful thinky face. And then on my nachos, I'm just kind of iterating through each of them, and I'm creating these li tags and that is just a link to the nacho with the price and then a button to add to cart All right now we can control where this goes and we can give button to extra options and some of those options could be maybe say like method so instead of post right let's think this through and the idea that I'm going to talk to you like this is that you should be able to solve these problems if you just think through what's going on and you shouldn't be trying to absorb the entire process at once, because then you'll feel lost, and you feel like you won't know how to start. But 
so far it's pretty easy, right? This button click should do something, right? So I need to focus on where that button will go. And we've identified that it needs to update my cart, it needs to add something to my cart, right? So in terms of a method, am I creating a new cart every single time? No, I, in theory, will have like this cart and I want to update it. So this method, what would you put? Get, post, put, patch, or delete? Patch, right? So far, so good. Nothing crazy. And that being said, where would I like to patch to? Some sort of cart, right? Cool. So some sort of cart. And what do I have? I need a patch to what? Like something like a cart, something like that? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. Does that make sense? Like, I'm going to patch to a slash cart. This is outside regular CRUD. I'm blowing all of your minds. But believe it or not, Rails can do more than just CRUD, right? Would it make sense to you to go to, like, a patch to slash cart to update your cart? I mean, you can go anywhere, right? You can just be like, a patch to, I don't know, nacho cart. It doesn't matter. So far, so good. Cool. How would I actually create this route? What file would I go to to update or create this route? Sweet. Great. So naturally, I would probably want some sort of patch to what? Sure, like nacho cart, right? But here, let's just call it cart, since at some point, I will probably have more than just nachos, maybe like hot dogs, hamburgers. It's flavor town after all, right? So, and this will go to where? What would make sense to you if I was doing a patch to slash cart? What controller should I hit? Hmm? Like some sort of add controller? Cool. Like an add controller? Would that make sense to you? Well, remember what I'm updating, right? What am I going to update? A cart, right? So could I not just Rails G controller cart? Well, this is, this is the controller, right? The controller, and then it needs an action. It's too helpful. Cool. So I need to create some sort of controller to handle my route. So I know I'm doing a patch to slash cart. <clears throat> And it doesn't make sense to do a patch to my nachos controller, because I'm not updating a nacho in particular. I'm going to be updating my cart. So I will create a cart controller. And what action do I want to do if I'm going to update my cart controller? What would you call it? Is update like a cool name to update the cart? I think so. You guys are so smart. Sweet. I did some of this for you. I did Rails G controller cart. And all I did was created an update action. Cool. I'm asking you very leading questions, actually, right? Was anyone like confused or lost as to like how this came to be? Would you be able to sort of figure that out on your own for next time if you're implementing a feature you've never done before? Right? Like, hey, I want to click this, and then when you click it, it should do something. Can you at least start the route, possibly identify whether or not you want to put it in an existing controller or a new one, and then name the action? Can you do that? Like one person? Okay. Great. Then this lecture's for you. Sweet. First thing I want to do is I want to put a buy bug in here just to make sure I can hit the route. So I have a patch to cart, going to cart update. Are there any questions? In my, yeah? Rails G resources. Resource thing? 
Got it, got it, got it. So this class is a big fan of this right here, Rails G resource, All right? And then you have something. Cool. What is resource built for me? Tell me what everything is. It will build for you, uh, for resources. It will build a model. It will build a controller. It will build an empty views folder. It will add resources with the model name you passed in into your routes file, and it will build a migration. Do we have a cart model? Do we need the cart model? We do. We don't. And I'll explain. Don't worry. Cool? So if we don't need all of these things, we shouldn't be building them. Right? In terms of your cart itself, when you do resources in your routes, will you be doing a get to cart, a create to cart, a delete to cart, an update to cart, like what are you doing to this cart? The cart itself. Probably just updating, right? Either like adding something to it or removing something from the cart. So it doesn't make sense to have all the resources and all the RESTful routes for it. Cool? So from here, I'm just doing a slash cart, the method is patched, I'm overriding the method. So I'm overriding, I have a patch to slash cart, I have a patch slash cart, point to cart update, carts controller pointing to update. Let's take a look. Right. Boom, boom, boom. This right here is a post to slash cart, but we should have, I don't know, is the method patch not in here? Is it going to break on me? Interesting. Is it not like that? What is this? Interesting. Huh. So like this? It's been a while since I've hang out right out. There it is. Boom. Cool. So if I hit this, what should happen now? Absolutely, I'll hit the buy bug. What's up? All right, cool. Talk to me about this error. It says uninitialized constant cart controller because in my routes, I'm going to cart. I should be going to carts. Cool. Great. Now, I should be in the buy bug. So far, so good, right? In this buy bug, what do I need? What's the first thing you want to check? Your params, right? What came through? Here, can everyone see this or should I blow this up? Great. Okay. I have underscore patch, some authenticity token, action update, and controller carts. Interesting. What do I actually need? I need the nacho, right? The nacho instance. Specifically this trash can one because I clicked on the first one which would point to trash can, right? So absolutely. So what I need here is I need access to this instance. How do I pass in the params to the next request? All right, let's think. I have this, right? I need to pass in params. When I'm here, I need to pass in params. So far, so good. Yes? Great. There are options that you could pass in. Besides the method patch, you can specify what params you want to go across. So I want the nacho, what do, we, what do you guys want to send over? All right, would the name be useful to you? The name's not useful to you? Oh, okay. Would the name be useful to you? All right? Do I have access to this nacho name? All right, nacho.name. Right? So here, all this is saying is 
I have a method patch, and my params is its own hash as a key pointing to the value of nacho, nacho name. Let's just test that. Cool. So if I were to bloop, refresh, and I send this over, and now I'm here again, I check my params. I see nacho name coming across as trash can nachos. Right? Because I had the button literally send the params over. What can I use? What can I do with that information? Hmm? Display it? Yeah, okay, how can I do that? Well, let's, let's think, right? In my carts controller, what can I do? It hits this method. What happens after? It's a little tricky, right? So what we can do is, right as it updates, I want to sort of do some logic. Yeah, right? Possibly add to a cart. And then I need to show the cart. That's the idea, right? I need to do something and I need to show the cart. Where is the cart right now? What page? It's on the show page. Can I just render show here? I mean, I can. But what else can I do? Instead of render, we can redirect to what? The nachos path. So far, so good? So the idea is that I'm going to hit this update, I'm going to do something to it, and then I'm going to redirect to the nachos path. When I do a redirect, is that a new request? Absolutely. When I redirect, it is a new request. When I redirect, it's a new request. I will show you. Let's take a look at this. It literally does nothing here, right? And then it redirects. So let's take a look at this terminal really quick. Let's take a look at this terminal. Take a look at this code. Hits update, hits a redirect. Cool. Let's take a look. When I click this add, right, what should happen? I should do a patch to my carts controller, and it hits the update. The update literally does nothing, as we've seen. It's empty, and then does a redirect. On click, it does a patch to cart, literally no logic, and then it hits a status 300, redirected to Localhost 3000 slash nachos. This is the index path. Status 302. That's a redirect status. Started a get. How many requests is this? Two. So the redirect, does this give me a new request? Yes, it does. Knowing that, in order to get information to the next request, what do we talk about in regards to the ability to pass on information to the next request? Right, so we have something like flash at a key of message. That could be what? Something like you added, right, what? To the cart. I know I have params here. Right? So can I interpolate the params? And what specifically in the params? What is it? Nacho name, right? Cool, now that I have this, going into this redirect for nacho path, in my nachos controller, here, do I have access to the flash? Inside this render. Yes, 
allow for access to this render because started this get to index nachos in this render I will have access to the flash that was passed in so that means in my index I can say if flash at a key of message then just simply maybe put in like a p tag or something interpolate flash at a key of message Have I lost some of you? All right. Class is very quiet and it's scary. <laughs> it's very scary. Sorry, I just watched a lot of like scary things recently, so I'm just like tripping out. Boom. Because it's flash, what will happen on refresh? I will lose it. It only persists one extra request. Cool? Any questions on flash, redirect, rendering that? Questions in general? This is server. Um, I'll, I'll show you here in a second. Good question. Do you have a question? No worries. Okay. No, it's alright. I was just. I. I mean, the class is quiet, so I feel like I lost you. So I'm like a bit worried. All right. Sounds about right. So. In my nachos controller, right? I have access to that flash. What else? What else should I pass through besides the nacho name? Right? The idea is that inside, right? Because now we can kind of see what's happening here. Inside here, I have a cart. The idea is that I need um, okay, I need all of the nachos, and then I can iterate through them, all right? Because if I can pass this data here, then what's to stop me from passing in like an array of nachos and then like, you know, nachos.each do and then like add them to the cart, so to speak, here. Do you understand like the idea behind this? All right, so going back, is it proper to sort of find a nacho by name? Or what is a better way to search for a unique value in your database for your items in the database? Cool. Very good. Smart. Cool. So I can pass in the nacho ID as the nacho.id. Notice I have access to nacho here. And that's what I'm doing. I'm telling it the nacho underscore ID is going to be the key. And then nacho.id will be the value in the params to come through. So let's just take a look. I'm going to throw the buy bug back in. And I'm just going to go, whoop, I hit. And so now I could check my params. And now I have nacho ID here, pointing to one, which makes sense because that's like the first one, right? It should be ID one. Cool. This is just as exciting for me, trust me. Cool. So now that I have this, right, what can we do with this information? Sweet. So now I have the nacho uh, ID, right? What can I do with this nacho ID? Like, what makes sense? I want to store it. So we have the ID, right? What else can we do? Yeah, absolutely, right? We can find the nacho instance by this ID. And so what can we do with that information? Now that we've stored that, what can we do? 
I gained weight recently, and I feel bad about it. You add it to the cart, right? So the idea here is, let's take a look at this. Ready? I'm going to hit this. Let's just add mac and cheese nachos. And I'm in this update. Cool? We took a look at Flash, and we see that it's just like this tiny hash. Right? Someone asked, is this cookie, is this session stored on the server or the client? Let's take a look at what session is. Let me just shrink this down a little bit. Cool. Session's quite big. Here you can barely see and make out that there is information here, like a nacho ID or a nacho name. Params is inside the session. This session gets sent back and forth. This is all the data that gets sent through. It's just a hash. It holds all the data. This session holds all the data for encrypting what is going on behind the scenes inside your server. So I'm going to break down how Rails works really fast. It will create a new instance of controller. Right? In this instance of controller, it will run one of these methods. Inside the method, it will either create an instance, talk to the model, and send a response back to the user. And then the instance goes away. This session gets passed back and forth between every single request. And that's how you can persist some data. So because this is just a hash, this gets encrypted, and we can take a look right here. This is, we can look at the application, and we can take a look right inside cookies, and right here. Sessions are stored inside cookies. Cool? And cookies, every single request persists. A brand new cookie will be sent to you with data from the server every single time. And the data that gets put inside that cookie is the session data. Cool? So session goes inside the cookie. Think of them as like delicious bits of chocolate chip pieces of information. Sessions are stored inside cookies. Cool? This right here is the key, the name, and then this right here is the value. Notice how they are not human readable because there's so much information in here that you do not want it to be read. So it gets encrypted. Any questions on the session of cookie and how it gets passed back and forth? It's updated. A new cookie. It is the same cookie that gets updated until you delete it, in which case it will give it back to you, right? So I can just clear this, right? Bloop. If I were to refresh, I'm in the bug. I will get a brand new one. Cool. Cookies are domain specific, meaning if I were to go to say, I don't know, New York Times, and I were to go to whoop, the application, I could check their cookies. Ugh. Ugh. Bloop. And I will get New York Times specific cookies. This is how they track you in your data, like what you click on, how long you've been on the page, things like that. Cool? Because once I click it, it takes all this data and it sends it back. It goes back and forth between the server. Cool? People act like cookies are a bad thing. I mean, they can be. But if I looked for, like, I don't know, a nice shirt the other day, and then eight other companies are like, hey, these are also really nice shirts, I'm like, hell yeah. You know? It gets really weird when... <laughs> You try to like replace your toilet seat and you like buy a toilet seat on Amazon 
And then the next day, they're like, hey, these are eight toilet seats that you'd really like. I'm like, I'm only buying one, you know? I don't know how often you need to replace that, but cool. Are there any questions on like cookies and sessions? Great. So that was a wild tangent, but useful. So the idea here is that I now have access to this, right? I can, in fact, set this session at a key of, I don't know, like nacho, and be equal to the param at a key of nacho ID. This allows me to keep the data. So if I were to check session anywhere else, I will have access to it because it is persisted. Meaning, back inside my nachos controller, when I get the redirect to index, do I have access to session? Yes, I have access to session globally. So does session at a key of nacho ID exist here? Yeah. Rails will do it for you. Rails magic. That is a very long. Session? Yeah. Well, I could do it here if I wanted to, right? I can easily say session at a key of like nacho here is equal to the params at a key of nacho. The problem is params here in this index, in the redirect, what are the params? They're different. Doesn't have it here. So I should save it and set it when I have access to it. The params come across on this update, on this method, on this button click. So this is kind of where I'm setting it. All right. And so just as an example, right, session exists here. Therefore, inside the index, session exists. So just as an idea here, I can probably inside here, I don't know, throw an li tag and just put the session at a key of nacho ID. Um, what is it? Did I save it as? Just nacho. All right, and this is going to be what a string or a number? Number, right? Cool. So let me get rid of the update. Look up, look up, boop. Cool. So there's one there, right? And that's all it does. It just adds like an li tag, right? So if I add to cart, boom, I added id three. So far, so good. If I do this, boom, it's like id four. What's happening here? Why am I not like adding more onto this? I heard it, right? This assignment operator means that I'm assigning it every single time. It should be some sort of push. That way I'm adding onto it every single time. The problem is nacho, session at a key of nacho is what? It's like an undefined sort of key. What I have to do first is like session at a key of nacho is an array and then be able to push it in. But I also run into the problem where every single time I'm resetting it to an empty array. I need to be able to create this array sort of globally somewhere. Does that make sense? So before I get any further down this rabbit hole, right, you can understand the idea and the logic here. What I really want to do is in this cards controller, right? This will work. It's kind of hacky, right? There's something else you have to do with this, but I'll get to that. The idea is that this will work. I talked about the fact that right now I'm just dealing with nachos. Which part of my application should have access to my shopping cart? Should it just be the carts controller? Should it just be the nachos controller, like if I were to do this, that means that every single model I ever make will have to hit this carts controller. Does that make sense? 
wouldn't it be great if all of my apps can have access to like this cart, this session, and not have to go through the carts controller? All of my controllers already have access to what controller? Application controller. So I can lift this logic up into the application controller. Does everyone kind of understand where that came from? So in my application controller, this is what's happening. I have a method called cart, right? And I have a method that will add the nacho to the cart in the exact same way that I have some sort of cart, which is an array. And then I have a method that will simply add the nacho to the cart. So far, so good? And then lastly, I will need to be able to display those nachos. So the cart, the cart is just the session at a key of, I don't know, do you want to just put cart? Is that fine? Equals to an empty array. So far, so good? Now, the problem I have here is that I will reset it every time I call this to empty array. So the logic would be session at a key of cart is empty array. Or if right session at a key of cart is empty array, then simply return session at a key of cart. Else session at a key of cart is equal to an empty array. That way I don't overwrite it. Whenever I call on it and see if it's equal to an empty array, then just return it. Hold on. Session at a key of cart. If it's not an empty array. Yeah, you're right. If it's not an empty array, return to cart. Otherwise, return empty array. Smart. Thank you. The logic here just means, hey, don't overwrite it and make it empty array every single time. If it already exists, the array is already there, just give me what was already there. That way I'm not overwriting it. Cool? The logic here is like or equal. This whole thing is refactored into one line. This is just saying session at a cube cart. Return this, otherwise make it an empty array. That's what this line does. Cool. Great. Can I call methods inside another method? Yes, I can, right? So cart here will be always either an empty array or return to me as an array with something in it already. And then I'm just going to push in a nacho ID. Yeah? An empty array is not nil. Mm -hmm. That's what this is saying. Otherwise, set it to be and it will return. Right. If if it's if it's anything that returns a card, if it's nothing, it's going to return nothing. Oh, Let me show you. If it's actually empty. Let me show you, right? You have a hash, hashy, equals to an empty object, right? Hashy at a key of, I don't know, your boy, equals to, yeah, sure. Cool. So if I call hashy at a key of your boy, what do I get? Great. And if I call hashy at a key of dolphin, what do I get? Cool. The first time cart runs, the very first time cart runs, does the key of cart exist within session? No, it will return nil. 
And so you have to assign it to an array, the object, the type of array first, because when you push into nil, right, what happens? Right? The first time I call it, I will push something into it. It'll become an empty array. Does that make sense? Like when I first call session, did you see that long, like 900 line thing? Right. Does it have a key of cart the first time I call it? No. So I have to create that. Cool. Yeah, good question. All right. Great. So how can I use this information? Well, I know I'm already trying to do that. Application controller, ready? Carts controller, does it have access to the methods here? Great. So instead of all this nonsense, can I do, where is my nacho ID coming from? I have a key of nacho ID. So I'm actually invoking this method here, passing in a real nacho ID. And so naturally, my cart will now have one additional ID. Right? The next thing is going to be this, Rails C. You've seen find before, right? You have nacho.find with the ID of one. Cool, gives me one. If I do nacho at ID of two, gives me nacho ID two. If I do nacho at find with one, two, and three as an array, I will get all three. So that means that I can pass in an array and dot find. And cart is what? An array of IDs. So now nacho.find with an array of IDs will give me all of my nachos, but specifically as instances. They're no longer just numbers. They're instances. So if they're instances, I have access to their attributes. So I have at cart items equals to nacho.find with all of the nachos in my cart. Notice, this is an instance variable, right? What does that mean? That means I can pass it into the view. So this is the application controller. Carts controller, do I have access to, do I have access to the cart items? Display nacho cart. Where is this one? Where do I want to call this? Yeah. Do I want to call it here in this update? Where do I want to call it? I want to call it in the index so that I now have given myself access to this instance variable which is actually all my nachos. So now index has access to what? Cart items. So now index, instead of this sort of nonsense, I can do this, right? Do I have access to cart items inside my The nacho. I want to create a list item for it, right? And that's just going to be the nacho name. And then I want to end this thing. Cool. Let's see if I left any pesky by bytes. Nope. But hopefully this works. It doesn't break. Boop, boop, boop. Here. I added trash can nachos, and I added mac and cheese nachos, dessert nachos, and on refresh, it's still there. Cool. Deep chicken pot pie nachos, kind of gross, but sweet. 
what do we learn about sessions of cookies? That this right here is a temporary storage. So it helps with state management. And if I were to go inside my cookies and I were to delete that session and refresh, what will happen to my cart? And so that's what happens to you at like Nike.com, right? Like you, it's all there and then you delete your cookies. You have to re-log into everything. Your shopping carts are all gone because they're just being stored temporarily inside your session. Cool. In the same way that if I were to do this, okay, that's weird, and this, and then I were to open an incognito and go straight to that same website, will I see my cart? No, because they are different sessions, right? I can add deep fry nachos here, and it would not affect this whatsoever. And so that's why you can have different sessions, and you can shop around in different browsers, and they will not interact with each other. Cool? Are there any questions whatsoever? A cookie is just, uh, it's sort of like a hash itself, where it's just a bunch of key value stores in and of itself. So like this cookie has this one session as a key with the value of like what's inside the session, as, like, as it is being encrypted. Does that, does that work? Yeah? Mm-hmm. 